Hey, um, can I get you to stay behind after session? I want to talk to you about a few things. Alright, let me just finish putting some things away. Hey, can you pass me those dice? Thanks. No thanks. Oh, I'll grab that one later. There's dice all over this place. Oh. Well, alright. So, wait for the last of you to leave. See ya. <laughs> alright. Talk to you later. Um. Yeah. But, I have just been having... I want to talk to you because I've been having some concerns with your character and I'd like to kind of like get your input on some of these things um but how do you think that session went uh mm -hmm. yeah no it was a lot of combat more than I usually do but what do you do something to drink or anything? Oh, you still got some? Oh, yeah. cool. Well, uh, I guess my first thing I want to talk about is I know you have your idea of your character. I know you have your idea of like who you want it to be and kind of like the person how you're going for. But the always angry personality isn't really doing it. Like, I feel it's getting to the point of being disruptive to the party, and I kind of want to talk to you about how we're doing with this. Because, like, having an angry character like that isn't bad, but it is, it's become almost your only character trait, and it isn't very deep, and it is causing frustration with other characters who want to like move forward in different like interesting ways and your character is kind of like preventing that. Uh, so what, what is your idea for where you want your character to go from here? Because you had some stuff for your backstory, um, do you want to like start working like maybe change the direction that your character's personal story is going and adjusting from there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alright. Well, uh, actually, let me grab some paper here. And write some of this down. Mm -hmm. So you have the stuff, you have the stuff with your family, right? Yeah. Um, alright. What were their names? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That was two eyes or one eye? <laughs> Sounds good. It's fantasy, I always go with the double vowel. Alright, um. Yeah, I'll see what I can do with that, but it's just, I think it can be fun to play like a, like a very like angry character who doesn't care about what other people think and things like that, but it becomes disruptive and like you've been playing that character for the last six sessions and the other group is not disruptive, uh, it's also kind of seeping in oh, into my notice where to the actual like person to person in the group stuff where you, you tend to like uh, talk over people and like shut just people down based on things like that and if you could be more conscious of that that would be very 
very good and beneficial to the group. Um, do, you, do you see what I'm saying at all? No. No, it's, it happens. Uh, I know I'm guilty of this, uh, but just try to be a bit mindful of it and kind of remember to try and not talk over and shut people down. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling about your character? Do you enjoy your character? Do you... Yeah, I've been kind of getting that, that you don't really like your character. Would you want to consider trying a new one? And like, rolling a new one and finding some way to have your current one bow out uh, you know, one way or the other. Uh, well, how it would work is either we'd probably have the um, your new character. It might be introduced, it might be introduced after. It depends on how it goes and things like that. But essentially you would have some reason for your current character to leave the group for some reason. Now, like the classic way for that to happen is them dying. But, um, there's many other things, like, since there has been tensions between your character and the group, like, it could be that, like, just, you could have, like, a scene where, like, you know what, you, you decide that it is better if you just part ways from the party, and it's better off if you seek her on your own, and your character leaves that way, and then they'll pick up your new characters anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, also, but that one, that one is pretty clear that your, um, that you want him to leave. Uh, if you wanted to be a bit more subtle about that, I could have him mysteriously die during combat. Uh, <laughs> I have my ways to make it look like an accident. Uh, but yeah, no, it's... Uh, there's lots of ways we can handle it. Uh, do you have any idea what you would want to play if you wanted to start a new character? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, that's, that is one thing where since we only, it's a smaller group and we only have, uh, only, only one person is like switching, other, it would be switching other character right now. Uh, you're still kind of like locked into the same general niche that you are, but since you were playing DPS, uh, that, that that is one of the most versatile ways uh, roles you can fill. So there's plenty of options that you could look through. Um, things that I think you would like playing, um, I'd look into. Uh, there are some. Uh, ranger builds, which are quite interesting, that you might want to take a look at. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of the sword and shield style for like the melee. Oh, that's one thing I should ask you. Do you want to stay as a melee character, or would you would mind being more backline? Because we actually have the frontline pretty sorted out. You want to stick with, with frontline? Sounds good. Um, so that's an option. So like, Sword and Shield Ranger is an option. I think it's a very, like, unique playstyle, where you don't really focus on, like, it likes to focus on, like, shield bashing and things like that. Um, other things I'd look into, uh, Magus, or Magus, 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 that one. Uh, it's kind of a frontline melee character with, uh, combined with a wizard where you cast spells and you can like essentially dual wield s like a spell in one hand sword and the other any one hand or weapon uh, and that's something you could do uh, another option would be if you want more thing you could always just go classic fighter like if you just want a real easy character to play uh, just build a fighter just get all the classic fighter stuff, power attack, work your way up to like whirlwind attack and things like that. Uh, 
just get tons of attack bonus and just do tons of damage. Very, very clean and simply. Um, if you want to go very different, you could go with like a monk and go for like kind of like the unarmed build. All right. Well, if you want more options, let me know, and I can send them your way. Okay. All right. So, how are how are you feeling about the campaign in general? Mhm. Mm yeah. I mean, I find that can happen where, like, if you're unhappy with your own character, like, it makes the campaign, like, not as interesting, because, like, your character, the person you are, is not as invested in everything. Uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe starting to hear would be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How are you feeling with the other players? Yeah, I've been noticing a bit of tension between you two, and I don't know what to do about it. Uh, just mm, trying to think. I mean, I could always talk talk to them um, personally, but do you know each other from outside of this group? Really, you do. All right. So, probably then best that I don't get involved, and so that probably that you should, might want to try and resolve yourself. Uh, yeah, I don't know, that's, that's always awkward. I've had awkward situations myself with groups with dating and things like that, so, been there. So, if you want any advice, just let me know. How are you feeling about the group itself? Uh, or not the group, um, the game system itself. Alright. Yeah, no, you've been playing 5e mostly before this, right? Yeah. Uh, no, Pathfinder is a little bit more complicated. Um, I do enjoy 5e, but I decided for this one to be Pathfinder campaign, because I am a bit more familiar with Pathfinder because I was a bit more familiar with 3.5 and 3.0, uh, but, mm -hmm. oh, okay, oh yeah, that's, that's really cool, uh, so you're thinking about running your own, trying to start up your own group, alright, what edition do you think you'd be playing, fifth, alright, uh, probably e much easier than Pathfinder for DMing a game in. Pathfinder is not friendly to Dungeon Masters whatsoever. Uh, yeah. Well, if you want any uh, Dungeon Mastering advice, just let me know. I've been doing this for a while. Uh, who are you thinking about doing it with? Hmm? Okay. Alright. Thanks for the offer, but I I have enough campaigns going on right now, and I don't think I could add another. Um, if you wanted, I could probably drop by a session, like one of your first few sessions, and watch and see if I can give you any pointers on your naming, if you'd be interested. Yeah, just because like you learn, you can read about dungeon mastering all you want, but you learn so much by just doing it yourself and getting in your first session. And actually, how about, how about you invite me to come and observe your second session? Because your first session, you're going to have enough nerves as is. You don't need someone watching you, even though I'm there to only give you advice and stuff. <laughs> no. Have you started much? Or did I just think about it? Alright. Well, ask around, make sure people are interested in first. Uh, honestly, the hardest part of dungeon mastering is probably actually getting a group together. Uh, 
Yeah, no, scheduling is the bane of every Dungeon Master. It's, it's a bane. And, <laughs> you know what, it happens, and you learn to deal with it. So don't be discouraged if your first group falls apart. Most groups fall apart early on. Uh, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Alright. Have you started thinking about, like, world building at all? Yeah, no, uh, I'm not super familiar with, like, a lot of pre-generated, like, established campaign settings. Um, I guess I'm not super familiar, I'm, like, a fair bit familiar, but I haven't run that many games in them. Uh, just because I find world building one of my favorite parts of running games, and I prefer to do that myself. Um, mm-hmm. Well, my biggest advice on world building for one is actually twofold. One is start small. You don't need like a full world map. You don't need uh, a, a bunch of different towns plotted out. Like, essentially, all you need is for like the first few sessions a starting area where like a few with like a few adventure ideas of like what's in the area, and then like general information about things like the small town they're in, is it like part of a kingdom, is it independent, things like that, and you don't need to actually build out everything, and you can build it out as you go on. Yeah. Like, if you feel like need for a map, because like, maps can help ground you, although I think there's an over-reliance on them, uh, but if you have a map, like just make it like a local area, like show like the town and like local like forests and maybe it's like hidden forests and hills and like from your bed river like it does not have to be a continent sized map. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so another piece of advice I have is honestly if you want to earn a memorable world, uh gimmicks are great. Like people will be like People will be like, but gimmicks are bad writing, and they're relying on the gimmick rather than, I don't know, good writing. But it is just a matter of fact where you're not writing a, like, well, not even in writing, I'd say that people shy away from trying to do, like, realistic, realistic, like, in-depth, unique worlds, and, like, those aren't memorable. Like, if you do that, and like I think a lot of people who do world building try to do that, you just get generic fantasy setting. I've done that several times, and it isn't wonderful. Whereas like my most memorable worlds were gimmick worlds, uh, where like generic RPG, it like its gimmick is overblown fantasy types, archetypes. Well, it's less gimmick and more. You should be able to succinctly describe your, like, setting in, like, a few words or less. So, overblown fantasy stere uh, stereotypes for a generic RPG. For uh, Elm Winds, it's all about slow apocalypse. Uh, and things like that. So, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like... Even if it's like a weird or a leontish idea that like seems like a bit too like weird for a first campaign, honestly, having like very specific like idea of what the game's gonna be about, like I don't know, um, if you had a game like if your your, your like premise was like like a completely subterranean world, to just say that like everything's underground. Um, that changes how you design, and but also kind of limits you in some ways, in like a good way, where you're not like stressed to be like, what are all the ways I could be going? Um, another good gimmick is some global event that's going on, uh, that is, that like, the characters might not be dealing with directly, but it affects them, and they might be dealing with like side effects of which. So things like, 
like the classic like zombie apocalypse world where like the dead are rising and if they deal with that like that the, the, the adventure doesn't have to be about that specific thing but that would it gives a nice flavor and feel to everything else they do um so like for generic RPG like the whole thing like like one of the main premises is like the Dragon's Valley ruled over by the evil Dragon King uh not all the campaigns I run in generic RPG are directly dealing with the Dragon King, but like the Dragon King's there, and like people are always in the shadow of the Dragon King's mountain. Um, although most of the groups at some point be like, are like, yes, we must kill the Dragon King, even if they never actually get around to like actually pursuing that goal. Yeah, no. I would not recommend running my style of games for the first time, because I run very freeform sandbox style games. Uh, for that requires you to be a bit more experienced and on your feet uh, with dungeon mastering. Uh, definitely have like a preset adventure. You could go with a precon, uh, not precon. That's for magic, uh, but like a pre-made adventure all ready to go. Uh, and like run off of that. I'm not a fan of them because I feel I personally find them a bit too combat centric for my taste. Like I during my campaigns I like role play and dialogue interaction more than necessarily constant combat. Um yeah. And I feel like running one of those prepackaged adventures is almost more work than designing your own uh for a new player because you have to become, you're gonna have to spend about as much time becoming familiar with the prepackaged version as you would writing your own uh, to make it like run really well. And like, at least with your own, like you have a better idea of like where things flow naturally if their players decide to go off rails and things like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, if you want to just like try, like try to think of like some just some cool world concepts and the adventures that flow from that come from there, like will flow from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, feel free to hit me up with any ideas. And I mean, if you want to, I mean, it falls in the line of um, using a pre-made campaign setting, but I could give you a bunch of information on generic RPG if you're interested. Um, because at least you said nothing else you're familiar with generic RPG, and there, the problem with like things like running something in like Forgotten Realms or Eberron is that if you have a player who's play who is familiar with Forgotten Realms or Eberron, they there's much more high risk of like you getting something wrong uh, about like the lore and stuff. Whereas something like generic RPG, like you've maybe, there's maybe a dozen people in the world who've played a campaign in generic RPG. Okay, that's not true, one of my groups has like over a dozen people. Okay, there's like two dozen people in the world that have played like any significant amount of generic RPG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like that's a little bit safer and you're already familiar with it, so. Yeah. Well, alright. Um, well, think about if you want to start a new character. We can talk about that later this week, if you'd like to. Yeah. Alright. And just try to be a bit more mindful about how you act in sessions. Um, just try to be more respectful and let other people like have to talk and stuff. And for the time being, maybe tone back the non-stop anger of your character. Be maybe be a bit more conducive to like it's not a thing that we could do is like we could turn this into an arc for your character and like work it through your stuff like that and maybe that might turn it a bit more interesting but since you're not super happy with the mechanics of your character that also might not be the best idea mm -hmm. all right well i will not hold you any longer uh but yeah no just hit me up anywhere discord uh text me either. Send me a carrier pigeon. Fine. Don't actually do that. I will not check. <laughs> Alright. Well, I will talk to you later.
live in them. All right. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, if you go down the hall, it's the second door on the left for the bathroom. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, well, then I will see you around later.